um, welcome everybody to the Tuesday, February 13th school board meeting. Can we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First, uh, do we have any adjustments to the agenda? Well, I have a few, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. Sure. Um, let's see. I know that we're adding under item uh, 6C, we're adding a, um, to under middle school, a technology director. Um, I came in late, I'm sorry about that, but we're adding Steve Price, technology director. We're also adding um, under the high school, Mary Page for mock trial team uh, going to um, nationals again. So congratulations to the students and their advisors. We also have um, some requests to um, have some overnight trips for the um, Alpine and Nordic teams. They're going to, to the, do the state championships and they need to be away each two nights um, in uh, over the next couple of weeks. And that's going to be on a revised agenda. Um, Would that be item H? Mm -hmm. the, the, the very back page. I don't know if I have a copy of the final. We've had three runs of this today. Okay, so it's on the very back page. And it's under, for your consideration, a J and a K. And one is for the Nordic team to travel to the, cla to, to the Class B state champion. And K is to add um, the Alpine team to the Class B state championship. Okay. So those are the changes. Uh, I'm sorry for this so. last minute uh, amendments, but they came in late. And I believe there's one more. I oh, think we're moving 5A. We're strike 5A yep. regarding the bike trail. That came in from the town saying that the, the um, conservation committee, I believe, okay. feels that they want to kind of go back and rethink their plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, maybe as we go forward, if I don't have the, the latest agenda. Okay. Um, why, why don't you just okay. use mine? Right. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, okay. Um, so moving on to approval of school board minutes, may I have a motion? I move we approve the school board minutes for executive session Tuesday, January 9th, 2018, regular business Tuesday, January 9th, 2018, and workshop Tuesday, January 30th, 2018. I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Uh, comments from student representative. Hi everyone, so it's been a while since I've been here, I feel like, um, but Allison also has the flu today, so oh. it's kind of a good thing that she can't be, that she's not here. Um, <laughs> none of us want to get the flu, I don't think. Um, so, in terms of sports teams, um, the boys hockey, boys hockey won their last game on Saturday against Kenny Bunk, 6-3, to three, and they're doing really well this season, um, that's really exciting, and they play Yarmouth at home this Saturday, which is senior night. Um, girls hockey lost to Poland slash Deering on last Saturday, and I think that that puts them out of the playoffs, unfortunately. Um, boys basketball beat Poland last week and advances to playoffs, um, but girls basketball lost to the girls Poland team as the second seed in their class. Um, and so the girls, our Cape team lost to Poland, and so they're not, they didn't make playoffs this year. Um, indoor track came in fifth overall at States. And um, in terms of art and band music, um, our high school had 19 student music standouts accepted to the state's honors festival. And um, uh, oh, was Cape Elizabeth musicians scored or came in second place at the Berkeley Jazz Festival, um, which was happening the past two weeks, I believe. And um, the 2018 Maine Regional Scholastic Art Award recipients, we had three of them um, in our high school. They were Isabella O'Donovan, Ella Trout, and Vivian Sullivan. And uh, we had our, well not our first, but we had a um, sexual harassment and sexual assault assembly that happened in January um, in to just 
make sure that students were aware that as a high school, we really believed that with everything going on in the media, it was really important that we talked about these issues openly as a community. And um, it went really well, actually. It did go really well, which is kind of difficult because it was, it's just such a heavy topic and such a hard thing to talk about. And high school students aren't really apt to be open to hearing about ways to combat sexual assault and sexual harassment in our community. Um, so it was a great, really open conversation, um, inclusive and non-victim shaming, and also there was a lot of talk about how sexual assault isn't just perpetrated by men against women. It can be um, perpetrated by men, it can be perpetrated by women against, against men, against women. It's not just for straight people. It, it can happen in any, any case. Um, it was a little long, some students thought, but it's a really great way we're organizing a, um, a event. We had a, an event two years ago called um, for, called Safe Safe Day, and we had like an entire day off campus um, where we talked about just had a really open conversation about sexual assault with speakers. And so this assembly was a great way for us to prepare for what we need to know and what we should include for the event in May. And I think that that's it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, so the next um, item on our agenda is pub uh, public comments um, on the agenda. Any members of the public care to address? Um, if there's any, uh, if, if there are anybody, any, if, if there is anybody who would like to speak about something off the agenda, we are open to that consideration too. So. So one one second. I'm not I'm not sure if you'll be the only speaker tonight um, addressing the board. I just wanted to remind that we're gonna if there's more than one, we're gonna if there's a bunch of people, we're gonna try to keep it to 20 minutes in, in its entirety. If there's just you, you've got three minutes. Okay. Um, it's a chance for you to make your your comments. We're not as a board allowed to respond. Mm -hmm. um, and then when you begin, just your name and address, please. I'm aware how it goes, but thank you. Um, my name is Jennifer Birking, and I am a Cape Elizabeth resident, and I have two children who attend, uh, I'm sorry, I have three children that attend Cape schools, but I have two children that uh, receive special ed services, and I have come here tonight, I don't, is this working? Yeah. I've come here tonight to share comment on our positive experience with our special education director, Jessica Clark. Our children have attended Cape schools for the past nine years. In that time, we have worked with four different special ed directors. Jessica Clark has been by far the best special ed director that we have worked with in this time. She has been a highly seen, respectful, helpful, educated, and experienced part of our team. In the time she has been working here, we have seen the special education services move in a positive direction. We see staff morale up immensely. We see educated, qualified, and caring staff and specialists join our district. In my opinion, Jessica has been the intrinsic factor in these productive affirmative changes. Jessica has been understanding and responsive to our children's needs much more so than we have seen with other directors the district has employed over the years. In addition to all of this, Jessica helped our special education parent group become recognized as a school organization and she attends all of our meetings. This has helped create a wonderful relationship with parents, staff, and administrators that work together as a team <coughs> towards positive progress and we as parents finally feel heard. I wanted to just quickly share a personal story. Um, a few weeks ago, one of my children had a critical event at the school. Um, I was called to the school um, because he needed to be brought to the hospital. Jessica met us there and offered to follow us to the hospital. Um, that was just amazing to me. That was not something that she needed to do, but just the fact that she offered that meant a lot to us, a lot to our family. 
I, I am hoping that you all hear my personal experience and take it into consideration to help our district continue to move in a positive direction and to show that you value, value your special education staff, students, and parents. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Alina Perez, uh, 14 Little John Road. I'm also an employee of the school. For the past 12 years, I'm here to speak in support of Jessica Clark. Um, I feel it's really important for the board to hear directly from us staff as well as residents on this. This is largely from a letter I wrote you this week, but I wanted it to also be public um, knowledge, so I'm going to read from it today. Um, during her two years here as director, she's taking a very proactive approach to ensuring that each child is treated as a whole child whose educational needs um, are truly and indeed um, individualized. She's really prioritized the voice of parents, um, both as advocates for their children and also as critical stakeholders in developing educational programs. She's worked long hours to hear parents' concerns, gain their trust, and collaborate for the best interest of each student. She's bright, she's a creative thinker, and she really values um, a creative problem-solving approach, really as opposed to some of the past experiences we've had with autocratic decision-making. I've been here 12 years. This is my fourth director. In the last four years, we've had three directors. Um, it's really important to underscore that. Um, to say the least, special education staff have experienced a revolving door of changing approaches. Um, the consistency which she has brought in the last two years has been critical for staff morale. Um, she's boosted that really through her honest and transparent leadership style. She's shown an unparalleled level of respect for our expertise and opinions of staff. Um, and through her example, she always has maintained very high ethical standards, adherence to school policy and the law. She's earned our trust too by holding us accountable to these high standards, and above all, she's been fair and reasoned. Um, I could really keep going on with a list of examples which make her an exceptional director, um, but in the end, I hope that you and the community hear that really in the eyes of staff and parents, she has just been highly valued by us. Um, she's respected. And she's been a dedicated leader who's made tremendous changes in the two years she's been here. I hope you do hear that as you can have the considerations that you have before you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> My name is John Delisle. I'm a special education teacher at Pond Cove Elementary School. I've taught in Cape Elizabeth since 2009 and I'm here to voice my support for Jessica Clark. I want to start off by asking if anyone on the panel could recite the Cape Elizabeth's vision statement. It's open minds and open doors. If you walk through the hallways of Cape Elizabeth schools, you can see that saying open minds and open doors hanging all around. Recently, the one word that sticks out to me in that phrase is doors. And the reason that it does is because when it comes to special education leadership over the years, it does not feel like an open door here at Cape, it feels like a revolving door. Before Mrs. Clark arrived, Cape Elizabeth had three different directors in a matter of seven years. During that time, within special education, both short-term and long-term vision for student success changed depending on the leader. Staff morale plummeted and trust was broken at many levels. Since Jessica Clark was hired in 2016, she has been open, upfront, transparent, and honest about her vision and plan. Mrs. Clark understands the importance of having appropriate environments and programs put in place to help achieve maximum student success. She has always made herself available for communication and provides immediate feedback on job performance. Since day one, Mrs. Clark has had a strong desire to work as part of a team and has provided meaningful district-wide professional development opportunities for both general education and special education teachers, related service providers, and educational technicians. Over the past year and a half, there have been numerous ways that Mrs. Clark has demonstrated that she's not only a good fit for Cape Elizabeth, but rather a perfect fit. Her ability to know the strengths and needs of every student with an IEP that I've personally case managed in the past 18 months is nothing less than extraordinary. On several occasions, Mrs. Clark has walked into my classroom, greeted the students by name, is aware of the background, and carry on a conversation with them as if she was a lead teacher. 
I've never seen that before in a special ed direct director, nevertheless any administrator in my 14 years of education. Her knowledge of students has allowed her to support case managers and educational technicians and related service providers as a program and plan for students' academic, functional, and developmental needs. <sighs> Superintendent Coulter, back in 2016 during the beginning of the school year speech you gave to staff members, you said that we as a staff need to chill out and that everything will be okay. The statement was, was, was received with great fanfare and had people laughing and cheering. Hearing those words from the top level gave so many people hope and helped us believe that a change was going to come. That is up until a week ago. I can wholeheartedly agree that if Jessica Clark is not offered a contract for next year, we would be doing a disservice to students, parents, and staff. The community is extremely lucky to have Mrs. Clark's professionalism, adherence to the law, commitment to excellence, and compassion for education. I can think of no other person in this school district who has put forth more effort and done more over the past year than Jessica Clark. I thank you for your time and consideration. Good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Maureen Cahill. I am the occupational therapist in this district. Um, everybody knows me by Mo. And um, I'm in my 15th year in this district. Um, you all have received my email this past weekend. Um, just to kind of encapsulate a little bit in my 15 years here, I have been through seven superintendents, seven special ed directors, excuse me, five and five, and then seven principals and seven assistant principals. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. I know your time is valuable, but so is my special education leadership. You've all, I, as I said, received my email regarding my concerns around this decision to not have Jessica Clark's contract renewed and how this decision will negatively impact the Cape Elizabeth schools as well as the view neighboring communities will have on us if this is not reconsidered. What is incomprehensible to me is that how Cape Elizabeth has, had kept a formal, former special education director who was, to me, degrading and condescending, as well as to many of us, as well as she did not have the student's best interest in mind. We now have a true leader. Someone who genuinely cares for both the students and the staff and cares about leading CAPE into the right direction. But I feel that is so easily discarded. I just can't seem to make heads or tails of this. I view Jessica as our Tom Brady. <laughs> she has navigated our special ed department the past couple years through some great as well as challenging moments but at all times supporting us. Sacrificing so much time and energy to make sure that we are up to speed with both special ed law as well as holding us accountable for our performance. Her ability to collaborate has been inspiring. It has been a long time since I have seen our team inspired and motivated. Excuse me for a second. <laughs> Continually changing our leadership in special education does not help the morale or the productivity of an amazing, talented staff here in Cape Elizabeth. Like any team, if you keep changing the leader, how successful are we really going to be for ourselves as well as our students? Jessica has always commended me for being such an advocate for our students here in Cape Elizabeth. And here I stand again, advocating for our students. From the words of, of the US Army General Stanley A. McChrystal, leadership contains certain elements of good management, but it requires that you inspire, that you build durable trust. For an organization to be just not good, but to win, leadership means evoking participation larger than the job description, commitment deeper than any job contract wording. This, ladies and gentlemen of the school board and Superintendent Coulter, is what Jessica Clark encapsulates and defines what she has accomplished in her short time here in Cape Elizabeth. 
Thank you for your time. Hi, I'm uh, Beth Milroy. I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth, Five Spoon Drift Lane. I'm also a teacher here in the special ed department. I've been here for over 17 years. Um, like you've heard from others, um, I've worked under five different directors, um, many of whom have had a variety of directions they've taken us in, um, but feel very strongly about the direction that Ms. Clark has taken us. Um, so I'm going to go through just seven components of a letter that I shared with all of you via email. She has a comprehensive vision for special education programs consistent with that of the district and helping students from K through 12th, um, as well as including transitioning of students to their post high school uh, future plans. She understands the federal state legal context for administering special education. She has knowledge and adheres to special education law and recognizes the importance of staying current and being in compliant. Uh, she understands the importance, for example, of the upcoming State Department of Ed audit that we're facing next year and has already begun to initiate staff training around that. She has leadership qualities which include uh, developing trust, confidence, integrity, and respect. She has the knowledge and understanding of the responsibilities of staff positions, which include roles and responsibilities of special ed teachers, speech and language pathologists, occupational therapists, social worker, behavioralists, educational technicians. She is flexible in solving problems, willing to explore options, thinks extremely creatively, motivates people, and promotes collaboration. She builds capacity in special education about current and emerging issues to improve service and avoid staff indifference and turnover. She has an innate ability to understand and respond to individual student wants and needs and collaborates with staff and parents to prepare transparent individual education plans for each student. She has affirmed professionalism within the special ed department by holding us to high standards, values, and validating what we do. So in summary, she's an amazing um, asset um, that we hired a year and a half ago. Um, and I am shocked at the prospects of having to go through all of this again. So I offer your consideration um, to reconsider. Um, while I appreciate the need for confidentiality, I strongly urge the board to conduct its own review and make its own findings regarding the basis for not continuing, continuing her employment. Thank you. Everybody, right? Uh, well, I want to thank everybody uh, who's spoken tonight. I know I can speak on behalf of the entire board that we have heard you. Uh, we have appreciated everything that has been written and emailed to us over the past several days and the weekend. Um, this is not an easy matter, and we take everything seriously. We value what you value. We do. Um, we recognize the, the frustration over the, the changes that you, as a department, have uh, faced over the years. Um, and we believe very strongly that, uh, that the department is made up of individuals who are all amazing and strong, and that we all put the students' needs and best interests first. So we want to thank you. We want to echo your, your wishes for, for the school, for the staff, and for um, the entire district. Thank you very much for speaking tonight. OK. So this, um, we're moving along to item five, which is communications. <laughs> We are not doing A, so any principal updates? Yeah. 
Good evening. It's good to see you all tonight. I have just a few updates and um, would be glad to answer any quick, quick questions afterwards. Um, so a lot going on at Pond Cove. Um, we recently um, provided um, our progress reports to parents via PowerSchool on February 2nd, and um, I've learned that we have a very efficient and, and functional system for doing that, and I thank the tech department, and in particular, Dean, our PowerSchool um, administrator, for his support with that. Um, we, um, on another note, uh, we recently screened all grade one through four students using our NWEA assessment in math and reading, and we're going to be using that that um, data along with other data tomorrow at our staff meeting to be looking at our tier uh, two and three RTI supports and, and regrouping some students and um, we're looking forward to that. Um, just a quick note on kindergarten registration. Uh, we continue to receive registrations daily. I know that um, at Pond Cove we're really um, anxious to see what size our kindergarten class is this year. Um, not that it, it's really any indication, but we have 61 registered now. Last year at this time we had 35. It could just be that people are registering early, but it's, it's a good sign. We like to see a nice, healthy population coming in, so we're hoping for 100 plus this year. Um, and, and finally, um, kind of on a fun note, uh, many of you, um, I'm sure you've read in my notes about the um, recycling, the Clinks for Schools Recycling Challenge. The PCPA supports this. Um, the um, parents and families um, use the clink bags that we provide, and the money goes toward um, directly to our students for field trips in the future. Um, our goal this year is to recycle 21,000 units, so 21,000 bottles and cans, and um, an incentive for the one incentive for the students, um, besides the feeling of accomplishment, is that um, there are a few students in a parent designing an outfit for Mrs. Forey Pettit and I to wear, made out of recyclable materials. Um, so if we meet the goal, we're going to wear the outfit, and the kids are voting on what hair. Uh, what color our hair will be that day too. So we're trying to make it a little bit fun and motivating. So um, that's all that I have for tonight for you if there's nothing else. Okay. I have a question. Yes. When will you be wearing that costume? If they, <laughs> well, they have to meet their goal. And I so said to Sarah, I said, but if they don't meet their goal, we'll say, well, you worked really hard and we'll do it anyway, right? But she's not convinced of that yet. <laughs> so, so we'll let you know. We'll advertise it when we're going to do it. Okay. okay? We'll be there. Thank you. <laughs> we will help from the middle school make sure they reach their goal. <laughs> we'll, go, we'll go stuff their box full of all that kind of stuff. So don't you worry. Um, really quickly, this time of year kind of gets to be kind of the long days of school years, especially for kids, and, and it just seems kind of hard, correct? Yeah, it certainly <laughs> is. Uh, and um, so kind of nuts and bolts real quick, we have just completed our NWEA testing, which is hopefully going to guide and, and kind of inform some of our RTI groupings and regroupings as we get ready for, for our Empower testing coming up. Uh, so that's kind of the nuts and bolts stuff that's really on our, big on our radar right now and, and what's going on. It's also a time when you sit back and just kind of reflect a little bit on everything that's going on. And just recently we've had a, one, ath, one athlete participate in the Special Olympics um, and a coach from the middle school went, went with that student. We've had math teams competing and being successful and doing things. I found out we have a chess club, which I'm starting now to get interested in. Um, I didn't really realize that it was happening, but I, I think it's a booming um, and upcoming. It's, it's kind of neat. When you find out something that you're not really already aware of, you start to ask around and you're like, oh, you do that? You did. And, and you learn. So that's working out pretty well for me. It's a good way to get to know more people. Um, winter sports are wrapping up, and obviously our music department's always incredible, so I just got a nice list of all the kids that have earned honors in that. So it's it's inspiring every day to come to work and just see the stuff and the quality of kids and teachers that we have. And, and I think that's the part when you're in these kind of long parts of the year to really think about and appreciate. Because it's easy just to let the successes kind of go by. And uh, so, so that's where we are and taking that time to do that. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.
So just a couple things. First, I wanted to mention something about the sexual assault assembly that Emily didn't mention, and that is that she, along with Tony Inhorn, two seniors, were the two student moderators for that event, which um, is not something I could have done at their age in front of the entire student body. So, and they did a great job. Um, I wanted to talk about something that I don't remember ever talking about with the board before, and that is 504. Then I want to blend into social media and give a little social commentary. Um, so 504 is a part of the Civil Rights Act um, that provides accommodations for students who are identified with a disability that significantly impacts a major life activity, which in the school setting is related to education. Um, 504 also applies in the job setting and employment context um, so that employers need to give reasonable accommodations to folks who have certain disabilities. Um, over the winter break, I was taking a look at our 504 cases, and as of January 1st, we had 39 students identified um, as disabled under Section 504. Um, 12 of the, the leading category of impairment um, uh, is 12 of our students is with anxiety, which is 31%. Um, 10 students with ADHD, um, and eight students with various medical issues, from diabetes to uh, oh, uh, just a number of things. Um, what is different about those numbers is the anxiety. It's a small number. It's 12 kids, which is 2% of our student body, but it's part of a growing issue across America, if you read sort of um, articles about issues that students face. Um, and, and I wanted to sort of give my sort of own interpretation of where that comes from. And I don't think it's unique to Cape Elizabeth, but I think it's something we, tr we are attempting to be increasingly mindful of. I noticed a huge difference when the 2008-2007 recession happened. Uh, um, because my sense was that students growing up in that period absorbed their families, their parents, sort of job insecurity. Um, and I don't think that's, that's ever gone back, even though the economy in some ways has come back. I think that anxiety around the future has not come back. So the second thing is, uh, is an issue around college admissions, which is a huge issue in communities like Cape Elizabeth. Um, and there's some interesting facts about college admissions, and I don't ha actually have the data, but I'm pretty sure I'm right about these because I've done enough reading about it. And the number one fascinating fact is it's never been easier across America to get into college. The, the demographic of students of college going age has gone significantly down. College numbers, uh, numbers of institutions is still way up um, from what it used to be historically. Um, it's also, I think, never been easier to get into a college which is a good fit for any student at all. And a, and a good college which is a really good fit for any student at all. So it's never been harder to get it, never been easier to get into college, never been easier to get into a college which is a good fit. And here's where the stressor is. It's never been harder to get into the 25 to 35 brand name colleges that so many of our students want to, apply, want to get into. Um, and a lot of that has to do with the um, common application. Um, which now allows students to just submit, a, submit an application to a, another college, yet one more college with just the push of a button. Um, so those 25 to 30, maybe 45 colleges, their application numbers skyrocket, um, which means their admission rates um, uh, plummet. And, and that affects students as well, because college admissions seems from a senior standpoint, I think Emily would agree with me, it increasingly becomes, it feels like a, it's a, it's a lottery. Um, it's, it's, there's an element of ram randomness that's always been there, but it's just really magnified now. Um, so the 2008 recession, trends in college admissions, and then the third one that I would say is social media um, and access to cell phones and all that other stuff. The superintendent and I have been in some conversation with an involved community citizen about access to cell phones and that sort of thing. But there's no question that people who create apps, 
the adults who create apps. By the way, it's the result of baby boomers and younger folks who create these apps really prey, I think, on uh, a sense of insecurity and a desire to get hits and be popular. That's why things are called likes and, you know, um, and, and, and social media creates the impression that everybody's having a wonderful life, right? Except for you, <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's a really, kids who are growing up these days, um, there's a real number of things that are going on that are really challenging. Um, and I think I, I sent out an email and then Troy Eastman sent out an email to our parents about this, what I view as an insidious app, which is called the After School app, um, which encourages anonymous postings by apparently students, it may not be students, it may just be robots out there, posting apps and, and, and so they develop this network of kids, all of whom go to a certain school, and then everybody can get access to that app and send out gossip and rumors and all kinds of junk. Um, and it really is, and, I, and it's, it's fascinating to me that, and I'm just about done, it's fascinating to me that it cannot have been a coincidence that last week, even though the after school app has been around for four years, Last week, there was a blitz of our students in the middle school and high school, blitzed by text messages from this app, sort of, I think, creating the impression that this is some kind of a popular thing and preying on the idea that I've got to join this because other people are going to join it. Um, it really is sort of a, an, an in brilliantly insidious sort of um, form of marketing. But it's sort of part of all that thing uh, about school anxiety and those sorts of things. And there's no easy response to it. There's no easy answer to it. Um, but I wanted to mention it. I do think there is, um, one of the things I will say is encouraging is that I've noticed in the college thing, because that's one of the things that we can influence a little bit, is I've found in the last several years an increasing number of our students who are applying to colleges in the Midwest and the West. Um, who are not necessarily the brand name schools, but are wonderful schools. Um, and there's one book that I would encourage every parent who has a kid, um, middle school age and older, to read at some point. And it's by Lauren Pope, and it's a book called Colleges That Change Lives. Um, and it is an absolutely fabulous book about how many wonderful colleges that are, that are out there that are not the brand name colleges, the 35 or 40 that are being inundated with unbelievable numbers of college applications. And our mock trial team is going to the national championship too. <laughs> and our Berkeley college, our, Ber our jazz ensemble did a fabulous job at Berkeley, Berkeley as well. So there's lots of good things going at the high school, but I wanted to mention that in terms of 504, those issues, in case anybody has any questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I want to just come back to a point I've made earlier about um, our um, consideration for joining uh, with up with other neighboring districts for sharing and cooperation. Um, we've moved on, and um, we being uh, Cape Elizabeth and Scarborough, we, we're, we're now um, part of a larger group uh, that group includes Portland, South Portland, um, Westbrook, Wyndham, Bonnie Eagle, that may be it. Um, it's called the Sebago Educational Alliance. Um, and we're just at, 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 at an embassy stage of thinking about what we might do collaboratively. What is appealing to me about, I've only been to one meeting so far, there are several meetings between now and April, but they're looking at a, um, the idea that they could come up with topics that districts would just pick from that menu of things that they want to be part of. So I've got a list of 14 possibilities. The expectation isn't that we're in on uh, any more of these that we want to be, but you know, the list includes things that we're already doing, like 
collaboration regarding food service um, um, and um, so what, what's the other one we're doing right now? I think we have a, I think it's with transportation and um, ordering cleaning materials, but there are the possibilities of everything from alternative education programs to, to language programs, to teacher development, um, data coordination, homeless children, families, what to work, to, how we can work together. But I won't go through the list, but just, just know that we are meeting, um, and I think that there is some potential promise in this. Donna Wolfram is aware of this and has, has attended one of our meetings and um, is quite excited about the possibilities, but just know that it's going forward. We have to turn in a, what's called a phase two application sometime in, uh, in, the, in the middle of April, but I'll keep it posted, but that's still c coming along quite nicely. Um, I also wanted to mention um, the announcements we have to date for um, retirements and there's, I'm sure there'll be, the possibility is that there will be others coming, but as of today, we have three from very, three lovely people, all of, with long-standing careers here at Cape Elizabeth, uh, including Wendy Aterio um, at, at Tech 3, um, Michael Efron um, at the high school, I know, and, and Deborah Jordan uh, Pearson at, at Pond Cove. So three lovely people. Um, but my gosh, their years total here are, are many, but and I know they're all going to be missed, but I wanted you to be aware of that. And um, again, I'll, as I get more, if there are more, I'll, I'll pass that along. Um, uh, uh, Kathy Stinker shared uh, some exciting news this morning with the administrative team about um, an honor that has been bestowed upon uh, Peter Esposito, our food service director. I can find it here. Um, I guess the Kiwanis Club in Scarborough has given a, a recognized and has given an award to to Peter for what they're calling the hero of the quarter, and it has to do with. Um, what he's doing in Scarborough, and he's also doing it in Cape, by the way, providing bag lunches and food for families to take home during extended um, weekends and vacation periods so the children have um, things to eat that um, can be stored even without being refrigerated and, and help them get through long breaks without being able, able to take advantage of the food service provided at the school. So congratulations to, to Peter. Um, I also wanted to mention to you that Donna Wolfram um, is, is tentatively going to be visiting our school district on February 27th. Um, that's the day of your budget workshop, and I've encouraged her to stick around for that if she, ha if she can. I think she will. So that's exciting, and she'll be in the office as well, but I want you to know that she will be here soon. Um, our emergency plan committee continues to meet monthly. I know that you wanted a report before the year ends and I haven't forgotten that. Um, I, I just wanted to uh, um, really thank our police chief, Neil Williams, for being a, really a regular attendee at these meetings and, and, and um, helping us think about various scenarios. We, more often than not now, when we meet, work through a hypothetical situation, maybe two, and talk about, okay, if this were to happen, what would we do? How would we communicate? How would we, where would we move or not? Would we lock down or not? And it, we, it go through what's called a tabletop exercise. They've been very useful to us. We've seen some weaknesses and some areas for improvement. But we've also clearly gotten much better at thinking about what we would do, God forbid, that we needed to make a, a, a serious decision. Um, but. Um, that's coming along quite nicely. And the last thing I, I want to do um, is to acknowledge and thank so many people that have helped us during the winter months. I mean, certainly the public works with all the plowing and our own crews for getting the schools ready, the bus drivers uh, driving in these pretty difficult w weather days, our custodians for getting the buildings clean. Um, I mean, a lot of people work very hard to keep things going during the winter months, and I just think that we should be sure that we thank them and, and um, when we can, let them know how much we appreciate their hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Yeah. Thank you.
Okay, so moving on to new business, next item, uh, 6A, consideration to approve the Cape Elizabeth High School Program of Studies to 2018-2019. May I have a motion? I move we approve the Cape Elizabeth High School Program of Studies for 2018-2019. I second. Um, any discussion? I don't know, is Jeff, is Jeff, did you want to, Jeff or Kathy, want to mention anything about the addition to the? You had talked to us a little bit about some changes and I just didn't know if you would be willing to uh, refresh us a little. Well, to be honest, I, hmm, I remember some of the changes from the last time, but I, what I really wanted to do I was point out two one. changes <laughs> since the last time. Um, the changes that I mentioned the last time was there was a new proposal for a new senior English elective. It's a literature focus, but it's focused on literature that deals with science fiction, and it's called Monsters and Madness. Yes. Um, <laughs> and... And also taking classes that get credit for um, high school as well as college. Oh yes, thank you very much. Yeah, there's another um, dual enrollment course um, in English called English Composition. Uh, that's through SMCC so that students who qualify for um, college credit for it can get both high school and college credit for that course. Um, and there was one other and that's, I'm That's in the English and math, right? Dual classes. Yes, well, the, yes, the, the math one has been in existence for a couple yeah. of years, so the math one is not new. It's that, the math one is called quantitative reasoning. Oh, and then there's one other math course that's called geometry. It's geostats, and it just goes along with, uh, it's a combination of geometry and statistics, basically for students who start ninth grade in Algebra 1, then they would go Algebra 1, Advanced Algebra, and then geostats, which is a slightly different twist on what we've been doing for a while. I did just want to point out that in addition to that, since our last meeting, there were two new additions to the program. And one is on page 29 of the program of studies, if you have a hard copy of it. Um, and there's actually another agenda item that relates to this course, but it's called pre-algebra. Um, it's the very, for, very first course that's listed on page 29, um, and that's there. Um, to meet the needs of students who aren't quite ready for a full year math class, if we have some next year, and I expect we'll have some. Um, and the second one is on page 38. Um, and this one, I'm, I'm a big fan of all these courses, but this one I wanted to particularly point out um, are social studies and science departments have been working together to create a proposal for a senior year elective that would be co-taught by a social studies and science teacher called Honors Environmental Science and Economics. So students who take that class um, would be introduced to the idea of the science of environmental science, but also the economics implications of various policy approaches to dealing with some of the issues that, um, that environmental science introduces, um, including global warming and water issues and all sorts of things. So I think it's, it's, it's a really neat foray into some interdisciplinary learning at Cape Elizabeth High School, so I'm excited about that. Yes? Um, how is it that it's 15 credits? Is it more than what? Yeah, because honors, great question. We right now have an environmental science class, which is 10 credits. We have an economics class, which is five. So this is a class that during the first semester would meet two periods. Oh, okay. And then the second semester it would meet one period, which would translate into 15 credits, which is the same amount that students would traditionally have gotten by taking a standalone environmental science class and the standalone semester economics class. So that's, mm -hmm. thank you. On page 26, I think there's another class that's new, uh, Monsters and Madness. Is that a new class? Or? Yeah, that, that is a new senior elective in English, yes. Great. New proposed senior elective in English. So. Jeff, and it could be that I haven't paid great attention in years past, and that's not great for me. But um, I'm excited to see um, on 29 at the beginning of the mathematics section, for instance, that um, 
we really have a strong link to what students will be able to do and what they will know and demonstrate. It's, it's nice to have that right in there. The, um, it looks like it's a nice strong link to our proficiency-based education. Yeah. And, and, so and this if it hasn't been there before, then I feel great no, it's, that I noticed it. <laughs> it has not been there before. It's a good thing you pointed that out, otherwise Kathy would chew me out afterwards. So Kathy is, is so you're welcome, credit. Everybody. Kathy gets credit for putting these into the program of study. She did a lot of work herself. That's great. In sort of, so in before each one of these departmental areas, you'll see the graduation standards that have been identified attached to all of the classes that are embedded in the in the individual courses. Useful. Yep. I, I just wanted to make a, a, a comment and a push for paths in the in yep. the course book. Um, on page two, I I, I don't I, I wanted to have time to sort of give you an example of what I meant, but I didn't have time. Um, when you speak about uh, other students venture out, the it's the third paragraph. Um, it's not just about paths, but it's about other alternative pathways. And I, I feel like there's a way to, to highlight that in, that in that letter a little bit more so, especially for paths. And then linked to that would be um, the, the description of paths. I had it. Um, and I know, it's, I know it's different from one student or one year to another. <laughs> I can't find it right now, but the, the course description for, for PAS, I thought it might be helpful if um, in there students have a sense of roughly how many courses they have to take at Cape High School in order to be able to still do PAS. Yes. Um, because I, I don't want people to look at it and think, oh God, it feels so complicated, I can't even approach it. Right. But maybe if you spell it out a little bit more directly, people... We, we can do that and looking at it right now, and you're right. Um, in fact, we may even be able to do it before this gets into students' hands, uh, okay. um, which is to describe the individual programs available in PASS a little bit more. I will say the last couple of years we've really upped um, our sharing of information with students about PASS. So, um, Last year, we were scheduled to have uh, a, a representative from PADS come and speak to all of our sophomores in an assembly. Last year, because of a snow day, it couldn't happen. And then because of the time of year, we couldn't get it rescheduled. This year, it did happen a couple months ago. So all sophomores um, who are the primary target population, because they're signing up for classes for junior year, and the vast majority of students who start at PADS are juniors. Um, so all sophomores attended an assembly where um, Kevin um, Stilfen, who presented to the board a couple of months ago, presented to all the, all the sophomores about each one of the programs that are available there. But we can we can change this presentation a little bit in the program of studies in time for students to get it, Susanna. So that's a great idea. Yep, it's not hard to do. Thank you. Okay. And then I, get, I just wanted to note that um, I don't remember this from last year also, but um, the changes in um, required courses for the 2021 and 2022 graduates, just noticing the increase in the English um, and math. I think currently, um, current juniors and seniors only are required three years of math, and so it's increasing that as well. So yes. just <laughs> reflecting that it's supporting the 21st right. century learning yep. target. So you're thank you. You're exactly right. Yep. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Um, Susanna, we need to vote. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Um, all right, so all those in favor? On to item B, consideration to approve new co-curricular activity and administrative stipend positions um, for the Chess Club Advisor and International Baccarat Study Group Chair. May I have a um, motion? I move we approve the new co-curricular activity administrative stipend positions for the Chess Club Advisor Middle School Co-Curricular Activity 2017-18 International Baccalaureate IB Study Group Chair High School Co-Chair Administrative 2018-19. Can I have a second? I second that. Any discussion? I think, I, I just want to say, I think it, it's 
uh, exciting that we started um, with Sarah Harrington, I believe, a, a um, um, what's the word? A, a, a Exploration? Group, a group, thank you, that's going to explore the possibility of bringing this to um, our, our town. I think it's very exciting, so mm -hmm. I want to say thank you, Sarah, and everybody who's involved in the committee. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, um, may I say all those in favor? Okay. Item 6C, may I have a motion? I move we approve the following 2017 2018 athletic and co curricular personnel nominations as listed in item 6C of tonight's agenda. I second. May I just be yep. sure that, that um, I've been clear about what the additions are? Mm -hmm. yes. So what the additions are, I believe, is Steve Price, Technology Director under Middle School. And or is that Technical Director for the... Technical Director for, for the players? <laughs> technical Director? Oh yeah, I'm sorry. No. I thought that might be. <coughs> and then I have Mary Page, Mock Trial Team, going to Nationals. Right. Yep. Thank Great. you. Thank you, Hoffman. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor? <clears throat> Item 16, may I have a motion? I move we approve the mock trial team trip to the National High School mock trial competition in Reno, Nevada, May 9th through the 13th, 2018. We have a second. second that. Any discussion? Good luck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Exciting. All those Exciting. in favor? Item 6E, may I have a motion? I move we approve the superintendent's recommendation for administrator continuing contract renewal for the 2018-2019 school year for Jeff Shedd, principal of the high school, and Jeff Thorak, athletic director. Second. All those in favor? May I have a motion for item 6F, please? I move we approve the superintendent's recommendations for administrator probationary contract renewals for the 2018-2019 school year. Troy Eastman, principal of Cape Elizabeth Middle School. Sarah Ferre Petit, assistant principal in Pond Cove. <coughs> Jason Mangerini. <laughs> Principal for Pond Cove and Kathy Stanker for Teaching and Learning Director. May I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. May I have a motion for item 6G, please? I move we approve the girls' varsity tennis team trip to Vandermeer Tennis Academy, Hilton Head, North Carolina, April 14th to the 21st, 2018. Second that. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? May I please have a motion for item 6H? I move that we approve Ted Jordan's AP U.S. Government class trip to Washington, D.C., March 20th through 23rd, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Mm -hmm. We're going to item 6i. May I have a motion? I move that we approve nomination of personnel for the 2017-2018 school year. Heather Boubier, high school pre-algebra teacher. May I have a second? I second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Okay, moving on to item 6J. May I have a motion? I move to approve the high school Nordic team trip to the Class B state championship competition in Fort Kent, February 20th through 22nd, 2018. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? 
lastly, uh, item 6K, may I have a motion? I move we approve the High School Alpine team trip to the Class B State Championship competition in Black Mountain, Mars Hill, February 18th to the 20th, 2018. I have a second? Please. Any discussion? It just sounds like there is a lot of amazing stuff happening. Yes. So, wow. Good luck to Good everyone. Good time of year for that. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Okay, moving along to committee meet reports. Uh, I can go, I guess. I got find out my minutes here. Uh, on February 24th, uh, the AT committee met. Uh, it was my first one there, and I was among very intelligent people, about eight of us, and we had a very productive conversation, learning experience. Uh, nothing to report, just the fact that how iPads are transferring from seniors to sixth graders, projector issues, projector purchase. Uh, one, one school room was still using a chalkboard, so they're going to purchase or look into buying a, a whiteboard for that. Um, a lot of great activities are taking place, like digital night talks, uh, Han Academy, they discussed that. If one takes the PSETs, and then actually in Han Academy, the, it prepares them how to study based on their score. So then the school is trying to encourage folks in that. Coding classes, and it was good to discover that there were at least four female students taking code classes, and uh, they had a discussion about Snapchats and um, how it was misused, and as well as uh, uh, it was taking a lot of data. So overall, it was a good meeting, good learning experience, and uh, we have a very strong team among us. And I have an IT background, so uh, <laughs> I can, yeah. Thank you. Uh, policy committee met on uh, January 30th and um, spent most of the time talking about um, hiring policy and transfer policy as far as um, staff goes. And um, policy committee will be meeting again at the end of this month. Um, we have chosen at this time to stick with the, the last Monday. And um, are we at 3 or 3.30, Howard? Do you remember? I wish, I think it's, that's 3. I think it's 3. I yeah. think it's 3. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, we will continue to discuss that policy and iron all those details out. And um, going forward, we will meet with people to prioritize what needs to come up in policy. So stay tuned. Everybody's welcome at policy. And just for IT, our next meeting is March 21st at 2.15. Thank you. The Wellness Committee, um, or uh, perhaps a subset of the Wellness Committee met, um, the school nurses from um, each of the three schools, Howard Knight and Jason, met um, to kind of um, collect some data or uh, just um, I, ideas, I guess, maybe more than <laughs> factual data, but about um, how the wellness policy is being implemented and um, changes that are being noted in the three schools. And um, I think there was lots of inspiring stuff that was being done. There's some stuff that is being continued, but um, continued with intention around it and um, and thought behind, you know, sort of goals. Um, and then there's new things added. I think we heard about um, a third grade teacher taking a daily walk through the school with their students. Um, talk about lots of movement um, breaks in the elementary school. Um, and there were a lot of ideas put out for the for the future of um, you know, sort of ideas to keep this going forward. And I don't know if we have a date to reconvene. 
No, I think that we want to come back to the board next with a report on the kind of examples that you're posting tonight. Yep. Yeah, we, and I think that we, we may be able to do that even next month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we met um, the building and grounds folks. We met um, with uh, Colby and Scott Simon um, and um, just kind of debriefed after the presentation, the workshop last week. And I think they just reiterated the message that they, they want to make sure that everyone feels like their voice and thought and idea is heard. Um, and they intend to, to have meetings throughout um, the schools with teachers and hope to glean information from all people, all parties about what might be useful um, to consider in renovations. Um, and I think that was that. I don't think we have a future date for building and grounds at this moment. Um, Kimberly, we just want to add that the uh, workshop, the renovation discussion workshop was videotaped and is available um, online, as well as a copy of the presentation that was presented and discussed in the meeting online. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we just mentioned the, the finance committee did also meet on the on the sixth and sort of outlined uh, the school budget, the process, sort of the environment, uh, and some of the, a lot of the constraints that were sort of under what goes into a school budget, and um, sort of as a backdrop to the upcoming longer session, where we'll go through in a detailed review of the upcoming meeting on the twenty seventh. I think video of that's also available, and I should be able to post um, a, some of the summary of the key points of that. Uh, discussion along with uh, some of the materials that were presented that evening. Thank you, John. Anyone else? Um, the Town Comprehensive Planning Committee, uh, which I'm a member of, held a public forum on um, Thursday, January 25th, here at Town Hall, which was very successful. Um, we had a, a good number of, of people from the community and also from the schools and participation. I, I just want to say it was very special because um, earlier in the week, myself and some other members of the committee um, gave a presentation to students in Ted Jordan's AP History class. And Ted, um, because we want input from everybody, not just adults, you want them from children, students, Ted uh, gave extra credit for anybody who came to the meeting. So we were well represented by high school AP history, and they really brought a lot of discussion and insight to the discu um, to discussion for everybody. And the audience was a blend of, of all ages. So it was very successful. Also, um, the, the Cape Elizabeth High School, I'm not sure what the right title is, but the Cape Elizabeth High School TV Video Public TV Access Club, which is new this year, uh, was also in attendance and filmed and interviewed some um, people after afterwards. And I, n I believe it's going to be available online. I just don't know where yet. It might be through YouTube. Um, if you don't have if you have cable, I imagine it's on cable on that little channel. But I don't, so I'm going to get the the address or the the web address so anybody can view view it. Uh, and again, you know, I, I encourage everybody to get involved with the Comprehensive Planning Committee online forum. Come to attend the, the meetings. The February uh, meetings scheduled was snowed out, so we'll meet again in, in March. But it's so important um, that parents, community members, everybody weighs in on what's most important to you about our town. Also, negotiations yeah. are ongoing. The school board and uh, um, bus drivers, food service workers, custodians, and maintenance um, group are currently in negotiation. So the negotiation committee is meeting very regularly. Uh, we will meet again after vacation. Um, we are also beginning negotiations with secretaries and EdTech One group tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so any um, school board agenda requests? Moving along then to um, upcoming meetings. We've mentioned some already, but if we can just get a review of meetings. Um, I'll start with the Town Comprehensive Planning Committee's next meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, March 7th at 7 p.m. 
here in the Jordan Conference Room, and all public are welcome. Policy will meet on um, Monday, February 26th at 3 o'clock in Jordan Conference Room, open to the public. Lots of fun and policy. <laughs> Time on the, the next workshop. Though. The next budget workshop is scheduled for five o'clock. On this is, a, this is a long workshop. We're going to cover everything at the twenty seventh, five to eight, I believe. Five to eight thirty. Yeah. Um, yep, February twenty seventh, from five to eight, at the high school um, library and learning commons. Susanna, I wonder if um, in light of the um, information about the decrease in budget funding for our town, again, if it might make sense to see if any of the representatives might be available to come and, um, I don't know, hold a sort of an informative question and answer period for us. That's an interesting suggestion. Yeah, we can definitely reach out to them. and um, I will and see if they have time um, between now and the vote. That would be great. Thank you, Kimberly. Thank you. Okay, so I guess that moves on to item 10. May I have a motion? I move we adjourn. Second? I second. All those in favor? All right. Thank you.